Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt. And with this first module, I really want to lay down a solid foundation and again, welcome you to class and ask that you share your valuable experiences with the rest of us. You know, that's the cool thing that I love about teaching doctoral classes is although I know a lot of information and I have a lot of really great experiences that I hope will add value to my students. I know that each of you has amazing experience too and if we're all reading the same chapters and digging into the research uh, literature that uh, we really are going to make this a powerful learning experience. Change is going to happen in any organization and it needs to happen but one thing that happens over and over again is you get people who are in leadership positions with good intentions that fail to deliver change properly and then the organization suffers. And sometimes the organization falls into bankruptcy and falls away. And then lots of people lose their jobs. So with the goal of our leadership program, hopefully you're starting to make the connection that leaders have the biggest influence on success and organizational culture than anyone else in the organization and yes every person in the organization both internally and externally have an effect on the organization so that's the mindset you've got to have is you've got to recognize that we all affect each other and that's called systems thinking by the way so this course is really designed to help you become an expert and a change agent because all organizations go through change and they need to go through change because organizations constantly are having to uh, fight for market share and fight for resources and make sure that they're continually to meeting and exceeding their customers expectations so uh, really being aware of how we as leaders influence success is really a key philosophy here and then really understanding the tools and the processes that are involved in change really are important so Here's a short PowerPoint, probably be a lot longer than, than I planned, it usually always is, but to give you something to think about as it relates to managing change. Make it your goal to be an expert in organizational change. Make it your goal to be the best leader that you can be uh, because you know that even though you probably are an amazing leader, you can be even better with the way that you focus on things and having the right perception and understanding the theories and tools that the, the masters of, of change constantly use. So hopefully you'll find this uh, presentation helpful as you progress in this course and help you really think about some of the needed elements in change. So let's talk about the concept of change management. What is change management? Well, it really it has to do with a lot of moving pieces and it really has to do with the people and it, it, it takes a big picture uh, look at the organization where they're at and then developing a process uh, and a, a appropriate approach to organizational change and it's recognizing that people fight change because it's human nature it's in our psychology to fight change and so leaders need to recognize that it, people aren't bad because they're resisting change but that as a leader we need to win people over and understand the emotions of people in order to get them to uh, move through the necessary steps of change properly and and then maximizing the collaboration of uh, everybody's efforts in the organization. So one department will affect all departments um, and one person in a department will affect the rest of the department. So we are all uh, linked in an organization. We have to remember that relationships are fragile and how our actions in some way, shape or form will impact others. And of course, as a leader, we need to make sure that we are doing the right thing to uh, move people through the change. So uh, let's talk about the philosophy between change and transition. So these terms really are not the same. And so uh, one of my favorite books, and it's not really a very expensive book, is uh, called Transitions by William Bridges. 
And in that book, he shares with us that change is a shift in the external situation and transition is the psychological reorientation in response to change. So they go hand in hand and uh, organizations need to change because customers are always changing and the needs of their stakeholders are constantly always changing. And so the need to maintain market share is always something that leaders have got to be focusing on. And when you lose an employee because they're not happy, that's a leadership issue. You know, leaders should be able to key in on, uh, on performers and team members and be able to bring them back into the fold and give them the support they need before they leave. And when an employee leaves or when an employee becomes unhappy because things aren't going the way that they expect, in my mind, I think that's a leadership problem. And so that's the, the thing that leaders need to remember is their people are the most valuable asset to the organization. And in order to retain the strength of an organization, they've got to earn the loyalty and maintain that loyalty of their employees. And that means making a safe work environment where people feel that uh, it's okay to embrace the change and they want to embrace the change because they see the need for the change and they feel like they're adequately supported and safe in the change. So here are some of the phases of change. So the ending, you know, the the old way of doing things. I like the old way of doing things. They were, they seem to be working. Well, sometimes people don't always understand the why the change is out there and it feels like a significant loss. I'm not going to change, you know, that that denial. I can't believe they're changing things on me. You know, so recognizing that um, people have got to go through the process and phases of change. So um, they'll feel a loss. Uh, they have to let go of the old ways of doing things in the old self that was a, that was used to doing things the old way. Uh, they have got to get closure on it. We all get closure at different times. And people have got, we've got, as leaders need to respect the right for people to say goodbye to the old ways of doing things and acknowledging the old ways of doing things. And that just takes time, right? So uh, the next phase of transition is called the neutral zone. And so that's the in-between time. And in that in-between time, you know, just like the phases of teaming, there's going to be chaos. And there's going to be people who aren't really clear on what's going on. And everybody is just doing their best. Generally speaking, most people are doing the best that they can do. And that's one of the things that I think we and as leaders need to do is honor the diversity of our teams and meet people where they're at. Is that fair? And, and in doing so, that helps create a, a safe place because you have to go through each of these phases. And so recognizing that it's a psychological thing that we just have to work through, just like the uh, phases, uh, you know, the denial that, that takes place with, with change. So... Um, a beginning. So whenever some, one door closes, a new door opens. And that's a really important philosophy for, for leaders is you have to really embrace that change. You have to feel the sense of renewal. I see the purpose. I'm, I'm with it. And um, this is an exciting new chapter of, for our team. You know, I'm here for you and I, it's new to me too as, as your leader. But together, we're going to make amazing new things happen in this chapter. Uh, be aware that the resistance can happen and it's not the change that people are resisting you know it's the the losses that are associated in the transition so the loss of their identity and their world the comfort that came with the old ways of doing things it's the disorientation it being in that neutral zone and then there's the the risks of failing and nobody wants to feel like a failure. Change is primarily a human resource management issue. So if you have a good HR department, they really need to be experts in helping people move through the change because change is not just about the products or services or the technology. It's about the people that are using those products services or producing those products and services and so with that people are going to naturally 
want to fight the change and then there just needs to be some understanding that takes place to help people be successful in understanding how to do the new procedures. It's about really overcoming um, the the people issues, the resistance that, that happens and so it's about understanding people. I think understanding is one of the most important tools that a leader can have. You know, recognizing that their employees as a leader it, are smart and you really have to respect people's differences because when you respect people's differences they're going to feel safer to be able to create and innovate and make your team even stronger. So that's where the trust comes in. So goals of change management really ensure businesses keep running while the changes are happening. Whatever systems that you have in place, those can't stop. You know, you've got to keep the flow of products and services coming through the doors and customers ultimately down the line have got to be happy and happy employees help create happy satisfied customers, the end users of your product or service. So you've got to build and maintain momentum, set the changes in motion, deal with the human side of change so that resistance is minimized, and then manage the transition uh, in order to help create new systems. You know, we'll, we'll talk about loose here, and you've probably heard it's a very simple model, the freezing, the unfreezing, and then the refreezing stages. You know, the old ways of doing things have got to be changed, so you've got to get people unstuck, right? So help make the transitions be successful. Allow people to be a part of the change because they want to be, and you can do that through your understanding as a leader, right? So some hallmarks of effective change management include aligning uh, visible support of the executive team, including senior managers. If top managers don't truly buy into change, it's going to fail because you're not going to have adequate resources or they're just giving lip service to it because you haven't done a good enough job of helping leaders understand the necessity for that change, right? So planning and preparation really is important. So get the executive team involved. Get all the teams aligned to be very, very clear on why the change is important. And you've got to be consistent in the communication with employees. Um, the confusion part, that's frustrating, right? So there's that human element I, you'll continue to hear me talk about in each of my lectures and, and in the class. You've got to be a leader. You've got to, it's one of the most important things we do as leaders is recognize that how we communicate with people, not talking down to people, but tr talking with people in an inclusive way uh, to help them truly understand and feel like they're genuinely valued in your organization because they are they should be because they probably bring significant value and it's your job as a leader to help them understand what they do makes a big difference is that not right of course it is so the the frequent communication really is important with all stakeholders that are involved. You know, communication, communication, communication. You probably hear it in all your classes. So important. It's a, a primary tool of the most effective leaders is to be able to effectively communicate. So the five greatest changes uh, that uh, our obstacles is employee resistance, middle management resistance, poor executive sponsorship, limited time, budget, resources, organization, organizational uh, inertia, uh, and politics. You know, these things happen in all organizations, but they happen in different degrees depending on how effective and wise the leaders are. So when you're dealing with resistance, you need to find people who are clearly opposing the change. That means you've got to have your feelers out there. That's where the one-on-one -on -one contact. You've got to earn the, the loyalty of your, your people because um, it's employees that have the most influence on other people, other team members. So that peer pressure really is important. So you've got to remove people who are causing the problems and talk with them. You've got to get everybody on board. Um, audits uh, and measurable performance help provide evidence that change is necessary. And you as a leader need to remove uh, tools and systems, any obstacles that, that would make the change more difficult. So um, be very, very aware when you're creating change, you've got to make sure you have clear goals 
uh, a very workable program. Everybody knows what response what their responsibilities are in the change. It help set benchmarks, uh, small wins to be able to celebrate accomplishments. Be aware of the key strengths of all team members and utilize and leverage those strengths. And then identify the key challenges and create plans of actions to, to, in order to be able to work through those. So change management goals and objectives. You know, uh, we have to ensure that the organization continues to do the work, as I talked about before, while the change is going through, build and maintain the momentum to set changes into motion, and deal with the human elements of change while managing uh, the transitions and, and to create a stable new systems that really seem to be working. And very few things are going to work out exactly the way you plan, so you got to be open to those, right? So uh, as I mentioned before, Reduce stakeholder resistance. Identify those people. Identify the managing political imbalances. Maintain control of the perceptions of, of the initiative during its development. Align changes with the organizational culture. Culture is so important. People, the, the happier the employees, the more trusting they're going to be. So help really create a, 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 a culture that it empowers people to be their own, where they feel safe in taking risks. Uh, anticipate planning uh, for the impacts of change and manage the reactions of uh, the stakeholders that are impacted. So that means you really got to identify who's going to be impacted, right? So uh, change management responsibilities enable the initiative to successfully achieve its goals, be very clear on what the goals are, create awareness among stakeholders, facilitate alignment among processes, people, and technology, and help stakeholders assimilate the changes uh, that, that come along. So really being aware of what people are doing and respecting where people are. So your challenges, as we've talked about, are leadership, internal, external communication, uh, workforce, the impact of the transition, and the key is designing proper training to help people work through uh, earning the skills and having the right knowledge in doing the, in the new processes to make the change be successful. With leaders, you've got to be consistent. You know, have very clear expectations, set people up for success, and be aware that it's it's your decisions and the decisions of your team that are going to affect outcomes. So how do people perceive your ability to make the best decisions? Communication really is the primary tool of effective leaders. Be able to manage the expectations effectively of your employees. Be Make sure that uh, all external stakeholders feel like there's credibility in the change, that you understand what's going on, everybody knows what, what, what's going on, and that people are going to get tired. So be aware of the fatigue and, and have a plan in place to manage that. Um, as the workforce changes, people are going to change. So you have to be aware of the people coming in and the people going out and the skills that people have and the skills that people are developing and the, the conflict that's going to happen because you've got new personalities that are coming into place. So those really are important to understand. You know, training, I think, is the key to most organizational problems. So you've got to have a good trainer who really understands the people and understands the process and uh, effectively observes people practicing what's expected and, and the support systems are in place with, with training. So make sure you've got the right um, learning systems for the the needs of the people that are there. Help have very clear lessons learned and help recognize and honor people's strengths along the way too. So know your stakeholders, understand their needs, communicate, 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 and again listening is the most important part of communication because when you listen to people it helps open channels and it helps you have more perceptions to base better decisions on and make the right changes along the way as needed 
Yeah, because nothing's going to go as effectively as you want, but only leaders who are listening can hear of problems to remove the obstacles or provide the right resources to help move people through the change. Uh, make sure you have identified groups that can help you uh, in your project. Clearly state your goals, that clarity really is important, and stick to it. You know, sometimes... Uh, it feels like change initiatives become flavors of the day because uh, it gets forgotten along the way. So you really have to make sure that people are set up for success and you're consistent in what you do. Uh, make sure that people have the right skills needed to be set up for success and that you as a leader have an open door so that people can communicate, I don't understand this. Or I don't, I, I don't seem to be doing very good at this. What am I doing wrong? Or I think I need more of this. Can you help me, boss? So those things are really, really important. So manage the change appropriately. Have the right programs in place and be able to identify those people whose work will be effective so that you can help uh, identify ways to help them feel successful and be successful, right? So leadership is all about actions. It's about perceptions. It's about people. It's about communication. And it's about recognizing that change is necessary and people naturally resist change. Um, help people help you make the change effective and roll people help people understand why the change is necessary and make sure you're monitoring uh, the concerns of people that are effective don't just pay lip service to people honor people where they are help support people with your effective leadership skills and provide training to set people up for success. Everybody wants to feel successful. You are only as strong as your weakest link and you create that weak link by not identifying opportunities and challenges that each member may have. That's why leadership is such a uh, an important skill to have because there's so many moving nuances in it. So again, Change management, one of the most important skills that you can learn as a leader. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm hoping that you enjoy uh, this video and, and that uh, you can help me make this the most powerful learning experience that you've ever had with your engagement in our discussions each week by the quality of your research, by the depth of your interactions with your your peers again thank you so much for being here and for taking time to watch this long video uh, looking forward to working with you don't hesitate to contact me uh, have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it i'm dr paul gerhardt